Hello, I'm Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. I'm going to demonstrate how to make an easy and very pretty toaster cover. Before I get started, I want to talk to you about patterns. I purchased a pattern to use as a template for the design that I'm choosing to use for this toaster cover. Now you can get free patterns on the internet, but please be careful when downloading free patterns. Often. Uh, they will carry a virus and it could ruin your computer like it did mine. I downloaded one, it ate up my entire computer. I had to buy a new one. So that free pattern was very, very expensive. So I decided it was cheaper just to buy one. When you buy a toaster cover pattern, it usually comes with other small appliance patterns on it. So it's worth the investment because you have a whole lot of patterns in with one. So let's take a look at this toaster cover. I just love this toaster cover. I was so happy with the way it turned out. I chose this novelty fabric up here with the chickens and the roosters on it, black chicken and roosters. Down here I selected little corn colored flowers for the bottom and then I chose different fabrics for the gusset and the back. And this little black ribbon here with the dots on it just kind of set it all off and added a lot of character to it. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside and let's look at the pattern instructions. So I'm going to put down page one and if you have your cell phone nearby, put this video on pause and take a picture of that really quick. And now here's page two and do the same thing. Take a quick little snapshot of this. Okay, I'm going to set this aside. And now let's look at the pattern. Whether you have purchased a pattern or downloaded a free pattern, always trace your pattern onto other paper. And I use this paper here that is purchased in a hardware store in the paint department. It's really inexpensive and you get a lot of paper and it's just the right uh, thickness to work as a pattern. Now, trace that original onto some paper and your dark solid line is the cutting line, your uh, dash line is the stitch line, and this pattern calls for 3 eighths of an inch seam. Okay, now that you've traced your pattern, take that pattern and hold it up against your toaster to make sure that it fits because in my case, the pattern didn't fit. I have one of these novelty toasters that's kind of bulky. It only has two slices in it, but it's very bulky and kind of oversized. So I had to alter the pattern. So if you need to do that, I'm gonna show you a real easy way to alter it. You wanna take your pattern and fold it in half down the center and make sure you line up everything really good. Then I needed to add height. So you're going to add from the bottom from this solid line. I needed to increase mine by a half an inch. So just lay your ruler down there and draw a line all the way across. Then I also needed to add width. I needed to add a half an inch width. But I'm going to cut that measurement in half and only add a quarter of an inch here and I'll show you why in a minute why it's only a quarter of an inch. So go ahead and draw your line and when it gets to the point where the line starts to curve take your ruler away and begin to blend it in up here at the top. Then you're going to want to pin this together so it doesn't slip around and you're going to cut excuse me on this solid line or in this pencil line cut it all the way around then when you unfold it let me show you what it looks like when you unfold it you will see that the half inch is all the way across here and a quarter of an inch is over here and a quarter of an inch is over on the other side okay so now you can see why you cut that measurement in half all right let's go to the gusset that's the part that attaches the front and the back sections of the toaster cover. Okay, now if you added height 
to your gusset, I mean, excuse me, to your toaster cover, front, front and back pieces, you need to add length to the gusset. So in my case, I had to add a half an inch to the height, so I'm gonna multiply that times two, and that'll give me one inch that I need to add. So only add it down at one end. This is just a rectangle, so you don't need to do anything special. So just add an extra inch to one end. Then you might have to also add the width from the front to the back of the gusset. So just extend your line out there, okay? So you've just enlarged your rectangle. All right, now, for the gusset, you need to cut one piece of fabric for the outside, one piece of lining, and then one piece of cotton batting. Okay? All right, I'm gonna set this aside. Now let's look at how to cut out your front and back sections. I always mark my patterns, front and back, top and bottom, whatever it is. Always mark it so you don't get confused. This whole piece of pattern you're gonna use to cut out your back fabric to show on the outside. You're also going to use it to cut your lining and your cotton batting for both the front and the back. So cut one using this pattern for your back fabric. Cut two using this pattern for your lining. And cut two using this pattern for your cotton batting. One of each of these will go on the front and the back. Okay, now let's go to your front. This is where you're going to need to design how much of each piece of fabric you want to show. It might be just a tiny little strip down here or it might go in the middle. It's wherever you want it. If you're trying to show off a particular design, you want to make sure you uh, give enough up here at the top. Draw a line wherever you want it. Then you're going to cut out a section for this piece on the bottom and this piece. Now each section, before you cut it out, extend, like for instance the top, extend this by a quarter of an inch going out this way, and you would add an additional quarter of an inch to use in the seam allowance. For your bottom, add a quarter of an inch going this way, and then cut that out. So when you bring the two pieces together, that quarter of an inch is used up in the seam. If you don't increase it by a quarter of an inch, your toaster cover will be one half inch too short. Okay, so don't forget to do that. All right, one more piece of fabric you need to cut out, and that's your binding. You're gonna cut for the binding two and three quarter inches by 40 inches. Then after you've done that, you're gonna fold the binding in half and press it, okay? The full length of the strip. Then just set it aside and we're gonna use it for later. Okay, now let's work on putting your front section together. Okay, you're going to put right sides together and then pin it across and do a quarter inch seam allowance all the way across. Then go to your iron and press it all the way and then fold this over and press again. Okay, now you have your front section assembled. Now you want to layer all your sections. Your back section, your gusset, and your front. Now you'll notice I use different fabric on my gusset. That's okay. You use whatever you want in each section. So all three sections are layered in the same way. Your lining, then your cotton batting, and then whatever fabric you're going to use on the outside. Okay, do it for all three sections. All right, now take your front section and we're going to start preparing the fabric for quilting. Now you're going to do these quilting stitch stitches on the front section, the back section, and the gusset. Okay, now using, make sure if you have a walking foot, you use it for this step. I'm going to use a wide quilting stitch that's a big wavy line, but you can use a straight stitch. So I'm going to go on a diagonal. Now you can go straight across or up and down, but I think it looks kind of neat on a diagonal. So I'm going to place my pins all the way across 
on a diagonal. Now, if you're used to hand basting your layers together, you can do that. Or if you want to use the quilting safety pins to do that also, that's not a problem. But since this is so small, I'm just going to use straight pins. So after you've put your pins on, you want to just roll this up, go to your sewing machine and stick it in and begin about an inch from this corner and start stitching. I'm going to go one and a half inches apart because mine is wide. If you're using a straight stitch, you'll go about an inch apart. Then when you get all the way across, you're going to go over to this corner and just roll your fabric up again, put it in your machine, and begin stitching across. Go all the way across. Okay? Now, let's go to a piece so you can see what it looks like. Okay. Now my cameraman, he can come in real close here to show you the quilting stitches. Okay, and this is all over. Remember you're doing it on all three sections, not just the front, but the back and the gusset. And this is what it looks like on the back. Okay, all right. Now this next step is optional. You can leave it just like this, but I wanted to put some decorative trim. So I selected this ribbon. It's a little bit wider than I wanted, but when I was in the fabric store, it just kept screaming at me, pick me, pick me, so I did, and I just love it. I wanted something narrower than this, but this just went so well with my fabric, I went ahead and used it. If you're gonna use ribbon, you wanna stitch real close to the edge on both sides, using the same color of thread as your trim. Okay, now that you have that done, let's start getting all the sections stitched together. Now, you want to take your gusset and stitch it to the front. And take your time. You want to find the, the middle part of your gusset and stick it in the middle of your toaster cover front. Okay? Then begin pinning it and you'll notice on this curve I've put them kind of close together about a half an inch apart you want this gusset to lay really nice going around that curve then after you've got it pinned down you want to stitch three-eighths of an inch from the raw edge all the way around then after you've done that you want to sew it to the gusset to the back pin it down, and do 3 8 of an inch seam. Then after you've done both seams, I highly recommend you do some kind of zigzag stitch or use your serger over the edges. This will bind the edges so if you ever have to wash it, it won't come apart. So you're gonna go over these raw edges all the way around, okay? Now, if you've got that cell phone handy, here are the instructions, detailed instructions, for the binding, okay? So put your video on pause and take a little snap picture of that, okay? So we're going to put the binding on now. So take your strip of binding and you're going to pin the binding on the bottom edge. So take the raw edge and place it on the raw edge of the toaster cover. Pin it all the way around. Then when you get to where your two ends come together, you want to overlap the binding and overlap and leave a half an inch overlap and then cut that excess off. Okay? Then you're going to take your ends of the binding and you're going to bring right sides together. See if I can get this apart. There we go right sides together and you're going to do a much neater job than what I'm showing you but you get the picture pin it together okay then do a quarter of an inch seam then finger press this seam open then when you're done you're going to finish pinning the binding and then you're going to do a three-eighths of an inch seam okay then after you've done your 3 8 of an inch seam all the way around the bottom of the cover, you're going to go on the inside and fold over the binding. And make sure the folded edge of the binding goes past 
the stitch line and begin pinning it all the way around. Two more little steps and you're almost done. Then you want to stitch in the ditch. Okay, so here we go. Stitch in the ditch means where two pieces of fabric come together. So you're going to stitch really close to the binding. Not on the binding, but right next to it. And when you look on the inside, you'll see that it catches the lower edge of your binding. Okay, one more really quick step. I always like to do this. I'm going to take, take this to your ironing board and slip it over the rounded pointed end of your ironing board and then press your seams open. And they'll lay nice and flat when you put it on your toaster cover. And then you're done. And you have one really cute, adorable toaster cover. I just love this one. I was so happy with the way it turned out. If you're trying to spice up your kitchen, this is a great way to do it because toasters get used and abused. They don't look all that nice, but they work great. You can put a toaster cover on it and nobody will know that you have an abused toaster in there. And if you want to make companion pieces to continue spicing up your kitchen, here's a neat little hanging pot holder. And I have a video on this, how to make a hanging pot holder. One more companion piece would be to make this oven mitt. And again, I have several videos on how to make oven mitts. And you can see it's nicely coordinated. It'll really add life into your kitchen. You can also do this for the holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas. It'll really liven up your kitchen and make it look festive. Let me show you a couple of other samples of toaster covers. Here's one with an owl on the front. It's got pink, turquoise, and orange in the print. So that's what I used. I used turquoise for the bottom, orange for the gusset, pink rickrack, and pink for the bottom. Let me show you that big, fat, oversized toaster cover I made for mine. See? Monster toaster cover. We live uh, in a seaside community, so I chose seashell, seashells seahorses, um, polka dot fabric. I use the polka dot fabric to make these neat little yo-yos. If you don't know how to make a yo-yo, I'll be having a video come out relatively soon on how to make a yo-yo. And look at these neat little zigzag buttons. I love how this turned out. It looks great in my kitchen. Now my next video is going to be how to make this toaster cover. Isn't this cute? I'm going to show you how to make this checkerboard bottom and then also how to do a really simple applique picture. It won't be a sunbonnet sue, but it'll be something else that you'll just love and it'll introduce you to easy machine applique. Then I'm also going to show you a new trick, how to put piping in your seams to add even more life and personality to your toaster cover. So, to keep informed on all my future videos, click on subscribe. If you're watching YouTube on your PC, it's usually on your bottom left. You'll see this word says subscribe. Click on that. Now, I'm not sure where it shows up on your iPad, but on your iPad it'll probably come up somewhere else. YouTube will then prompt you to enter your email address enter that email address and the next time I have a new video YouTube sends you an email with a big button in the center you click on that and it takes you directly to my next video I'm Cheryl I'm I'm really glad you came to my sewing machine sewing machine my sewing room I mean I love my sewing machine see you next time and happy sewing